Sorry, it's a student. So how do you phrase a piece of music? Not all music is written in easy eight bar phrases. Not all music makes sense as to where the melody is going. Not all music has dynamics written in. So how do you decide how to phrase a piece of music? One of the first things I do if I get a new piece of music, I play through it just to see what it sounds like, just to get a sort of overall picture of an idea of a piece of music. Let's just say it's a Brahms sonata and I've never played it before. I'll play through the Brahms sonata. It's gorgeous. It's difficult. There are some dynamics written in and other places might be unclear, but overall you can get a good sense of a piece just reading through it. My next step would probably be to listen to it. Listen to a lot of recordings of a piece. It is a great way to see what um, people do traditionally what people do stylistically, and how people phrase certain patterns, where people take breaths, how to pace a crescendo, how to pace rubato, you know, things that make it a, you know, sort of their interpretation of a piece. And one way that you can do this is, say you've got your Brahms sonata in front of you, photocopy it. Get like a clean copy and get three or four or five colored pencils, and then listen to as many recordings as you have colored pencils. And let's just say you've got an orange colored pencil and orange is going to be Sabina Meyer. And you're gonna listen to that sonata and you're gonna follow, you're just gonna mark in everything, every dynamic she does, every breath she takes, you know, you might have to like rewind the recording a little bit, but you're gonna mark in everything that she does. Your blue colored pencil, that's gonna be Richard Stoltzman. So you're gonna listen to Richard Stoltzman's recording and you're gonna mark in every dynamic that he does, every time he slows down, every time he moves forward. You're gonna mark all those in. Then you've got red. Red is gonna be Harold Wright. You're gonna mark in everything. You kind of get what I'm saying. So you'll see where people overlap in musical ideas and you'll see where people sort of verge off and do their own thing. And there's arguably no like right answer to interpret a piece of music. I say arguably because there are traditional ways of playing certain pieces. <coughs> Mozart clarinet concerto. <coughs> and also you want to stay within the practices of the time period. You know, the sort of where we are now in the history of classical music, we have the Baroque era, we have the classical era, we have the Renaissance, we have the romantic period. We have tons of different ways that music is played. So if you have something that Mozart wrote and you play it in a way that a Tchaikovsky piece would be played, that could be viewed as being almost wrong because Tchaikovsky came after Mozart. So the way that a Mozart piece would be played would be played more in tune with the classical era since the romantic period hasn't happened yet but because we have experienced romantic music that sort of carries over into when we're playing music from the classical era so you can see where things get a little overlappy and weird just to give you a couple names of clarinet players who i really like and admire richard stoltzman Charles Nydic, Harold Wright, Sabina Meyer, Martin Frost, and Bob Spring. <laughs> listen, listen, or listen to randos that you find on YouTube. Because you never know, they might have some good ideas. Another thing you can do to play musically is to sing it really, really cheesy. Because you can sing something and you can play something, but the way you play it might be different from the way you sing it. Like, if you're thinking of the Rossini introduction theme and variations, da 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 da
It might be a little too much, but isn't a little too much more interesting than not enough? I think yes. While I'm on the topic of opera, one of my favorite... <coughs> While I'm on the topic of opera and vocalists, the thing that you want to do is listen to how singers phrase because they have the most natural instrument. They have the human voice. You can't circular breathe with the human voice. You can't triple tongue with the human voice. You can't push buttons down. You have to produce the sound with your body and you don't have any musical instrument helping you out. It is your instrument, it is your vocal cords. In my first year in my master's degree program, I sort of hit a wall where I was just like, I just, I don't know how to phrase anymore. I had sort of like writer's block, but for clarinet. And I have like hundreds of records. And I have, a lot of them are like voice pieces, arias, solos, and um, operas, all based around the human voice. So I would just put a record on and like lay down, close my eyes, and just listen as if I was the singer. Listen to how this person used their voice, how they used dynamics, how they phrased words, how the sound was just produced. I was playing through a piece of music and the person who was in the room next to me came in and was like, you sound beautiful. Like The way you're phrasing is so incredible and like lyrical and just, you know, it it's working. And he had no idea that all I had been doing for the past week was, or two weeks or month or however long I did this for, I still do it to this day. I do it frequently. Um, you know, he had no idea that I was listening to to vocalists. Good point is if you're a clarinet player, get familiar with repertoire from other instruments. Like, I think I know more horn pieces than I know clarinet pieces. Dating three horn players probably wasn't the best way to go about learning horn music. But it happened. If you have your own tips relating to dynamics or musicality, anything that you feel that I left out of this video, uh, leave it in the comments and we'll talk about it. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, come back for more, uh, yada yada yada. Why are you even still here? Like, go practice your dynamics.